There are two things that I'm never getting back. The countless hours I spent incorrectly trying to learn the fretboard and not getting anywhere, and my money from Spirit Halloween after what I thought was gonna be a pretty fire Mr. Potato Head costume. But anyways, I am here to help you not make that same mistake. Not only with the Mr. Potato Head costume, if you do get it, get your own fan because the one that they give you to keep inflated is not that good. But also just learning the fretboard, this is gonna be something that uh, I've talked about a little bit, but I'm gonna try to marry a few different concepts together, right? So we're gonna start this off in the people's key of G, and we're gonna do these kind of like upper structure triads, whatever you wanna call it. This is just gonna be just stuff you'll never forget on guitar, right? People's key, key of G, I want you to play a G major like this, where it's just the third fret of the high E string, third fret of the B string, fourth fret of the G string, okay? So we're gonna do this in a bunch of different keys and a bunch of different chords, but we're gonna start with this being our major chord, right? You can see this is part of a bar chord, you can see this is just a different way to play G major open, but this is where we're gonna start everything, okay? We're gonna think major chord, all right? And then the opposite of a major chord is gonna be a minor chord. I like this example because it is a great way to see how major chords and minor chords are mostly the same, just a little bit different with that third, okay? So a major chord is a root note, a major third, and a fifth, all right? So what I mean by that is if we actually just take the shape here, but talk about the notes, we have a G, a D, and a B, okay? Now all that stuff comes from the major scale. G, A, B is the third note, C, D is the fifth note, uh, and then we've got the other notes in the scale. But to make that chord, and to make a bunch of licks and riffs, which we're gonna end up doing by the end of this video, it all starts here. The only difference between that and a minor chord is a flat third. So in the key of G minor, we'd have a one, two, flat three, G, A, B flat, C, D. All that does is we take this B, make it B flat, flat it. Okay, so at its core, that's all you really have to know. Once you have that down, you'd be amazed at how little music theory it takes to really work your way through the entire fretboard over and over again, and how that can be equated into not only playing stuff that sounds like that, but also, you know, just kinda any licks. So, again, we're gonna do all this. Today's video is sponsored by Sweetwater and X5. You may notice I'm not, I'm cable free, guys. Hands free, I'm rocking the X5 uh, receiver transmitter combo. This thing is awesome. I've just got this, the other side of these, plugged into my AC15, way over there. And uh, yeah, it's, Especially in an apartment this size, it is so nice just not have a cable. I think a lot of people think wireless setups are just for, you know, playing live. You can easily just like have this around and then it comes in a nice little carry case like this right here. And then I just have this by the amp now over there. It's just kind of like just chill on top of the amp and then I can just kind of take it out. I also have used these for busking with an acoustic guitar and they work great. The range is amazing. I am so happy they have a better case. I've been I've been using X5 stuff for like a long time, like probably like four or five years now. And uh, I used to just put them loose in my backpack or guitar case. So the fact that it comes with a cool case, uh, comes with a Y cable so you can charge them both at the same time, USB-C. Awesome stuff, X5, Sweetwater, everything you get, get through my Sweetwater affiliate link, please, it really helps me out. So let's talk about how this stacks up wirelessly to the other chords in this key, right? So again, this is our one chord, G major. We can thicken it up with more notes, just more duplicates of the same notes to get that major chord. But I really think thinking about this, if you've never done it this way, is super helpful because now we can just go to the next chord in the key, which is an A minor, and the next chord, which is a B minor. Remember, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp is the only sharp in this key, is the seventh note. Huh? All of those notes become chords. The one chord, the four chord, and the five chord are major. The two, three, and six are minor, okay? So we're gonna go through all of the voicings here. One chord, G major, four, three, three. Let's think about the root note as being on the top string, the highest, the high E string, right? So here's my G, and then I'm gonna go down major, one, five, major third. A is a whole step from there. 
one, five, minor third, and then B, one, five, minor third, and then C, one, five, major third. So whole, whole, half. Three, five, seven, eight. Let's turn them into chords, all right? So I wanna focus on just these four chords right now and then navigating in between them. I think that's a really, really important part of just guitar playing in general, no matter where you're coming from, right? Even if you're playing an acoustic guitar and you're playing all open chords, you're playing like G, C. You can kind of jump in between this kind of thing and then back to the open chords. So that's why it's really important to start thinking about these in a row, right? Anybody can do this. This is way easier than playing an actual G, A minor, B minor, C major. G, A, B, C. Watch how my thumb kind of tracks along the neck instead of reaching. I think a lot of beginners might be like, all right, I know I'm going three, three, four to five, five, five. And it's like, all right, conceptually that's easy enough. But a lot of times, like, you know, especially with certain beginner players, they reach for it like that. Uh, don't do that, that's dumb. Move your hand along. See how I'm kind of like lining up my pointer finger and my thumb when I do that? And just right, right there. I'm playing it with my fingers, you can play it with a pick. But then start to, in fact, let's just take these three chords right here and then think of each single string and how that affects it because now you're accidentally learning a scale just by learning the chords that go together. What I mean by that is, let's take the top string first. If we have G to A to B, we really have three, five, seven. What about the B string? Again, it's like, all right, I got that first chord, it's like this, the second chord's here, and then it's three, five, seven, again, so. And then the only time it changes is that major third. So now we can kind of create a scale if we start with the lower strings here. Just like that, right? Now what you may have noticed is if we talk about the notes here, around this is our B, the fourth fret on the G string is B, B, C, D, and then we go to another D, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. So you'll notice that that's the same note, okay? So that's why it's something that we probably wouldn't do if we're doing a full scale shape because that just goes up and down, right? But just knowing the location is super important because maybe you want to grab, instead of here, maybe you want to grab here instead. Okay? And the nice thing about having your hand line up like this is all the licks and stuff that you could do off of a certain root note are going to be fair game. For instance, I know that you probably already know the minor pentatonic scale, right? Five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. Well, you can actually insert that shape off of any root position here, okay? So what I mean by that is, let's go to the two chord, okay? So here's G, A, it's the two chord. We can jump right into this position right there, and then you'll notice that, it's like, where does my pinky go? It actually goes to the eighth fret on the high string, which is the top of that C triad that we're getting from right there, okay? So now it's like, all right, well, maybe a lot of these little licks and stuff are starting to make sense in my mind's eye, which is something I didn't do. Like when I was learning, I was like, all right, I'm gonna learn chords. These are the chords that go together. It's like, all right, cool, I think I got that. And then a totally different exercise to be like, all right, now I'm gonna learn scales. And it's like, now I'm gonna learn arpeggios. And it's like, it, for whatever reason, it didn't really dawn on me that like, all right, well, this is all the same thing. I'm just calling it a different name, but it's the same thing that I'm learning. I'm just learning where the right notes are versus the wrong notes. And that's why I think thinking of chord structures and then getting the form down from there is super important, right? So we've got a couple different ideas coming at it from, you know, just this highest three strings, okay? So now that we have this kind of like scale, which I think is really easy to think about because again, the, the highest two strings are identical. Three, five, seven, three, five, seven, G, A, B, C, and then D. Okay, so the four chord and the five chord. Four chord is eight, eight, nine, remember? 
major third. If you don't take anything else from this lesson other than that B string to G string, one fret offset is major, B string to G string, same fret is minor. That's all, that's, that's great. That's a great way to start thinking about this because then now you can start playing two note chords, dyads. We don't have to do the whole thing, right? Even though that sounds great, we can just take pieces of it. We can just go the fifth and then uh, the major right there, bump, minor, minor. And then you don't even have to use a bar chord, you can kind of just put your ring finger and pinky together. Add some vibrato. I think in my experience they have a little more control when you have two fingers together doing stuff. But again, all that comes from thinking in this way. So now let's focus on just the four and the five chord. Okay, and even just make it simple. Well, eventually we'll get to an E minor, but really just between here, nine, eight, eight, a whole step higher, 11, 10, 10. These are little licks that I can do just from knowing that Here's my root and fifth, and then the two major thirds. And then now I can just kind of jam around, improvise. Back to G, right? Two chord. Minor pentatonic, three chord minor pentatonic, four chord, and all that stuff is just from those little pieces of chords that we're using, and then we can end on the next, the sixth chord minor, right? So this is E minor. Again, we're jumping around a lot in this lesson, but I do think that like this is like a great way to learn it because you're thinking of so many different things at once. And even though like hopefully it's not confusing in the way that I am kind of jumping around a lot, talking about different things in the same vein, I, I think that like once you can kind of see all these as the same thing, it like really just, I don't know, there's like a, an awareness that just kind of like, for me at least it worked this way where it just like the awareness just hit me all at once. It's like, oh, okay. So now it's like I get that like minor pentatonic thing goes with all these chord voicings and stuff that I'm using. And it goes with the arpeggios and stuff that I'm using. So uh, real quick, let's go over the chord scale one more time. G major, one chord. A minor, two chord. B minor, three chord. C major, four chord. D major, five chord. E minor, six chord. And then if you wanna put a cap on it, just take that E minor and then grab the 15th fret and there's your G again. Okay? So, practice that. And you'll be good to go. The next part of the sponsored video, also by X5, is the stand. This is a butterfly stand. This is the best stand that I've ever used because it's so low profile. You can just break it down like that and then just it goes flat. And the magnet here keeps it together so it's not going to fall apart. Right? Check that out. Got it. Clocked it. And then it'll fit like an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, even something with like a weird body like this St. Vincent. You can just put it in a little electric guitar slot and it is good to go and stable and it's got rubber backing so it's not gonna mess up the guitar if it's like a priceless piece of wood. I usually actually have this in this, the, the rack and then I'll have my Martin D18 on this stand just because, you know, again, I love the, the rubber features on this. And when you break it down, it just fits in like a gig bag or a backpack. So shout out to X5 for really getting the getting it and making just cool portable stuff as far as, you know, the wireless transmitter receiver set and the butterfly stand that uh, is super handy to have anywhere. Even just keeping one in my car. I have two of these. And the other one I just keep like in my car just because I've been to so many like shows or if I just go up somewhere and I always have to like awkwardly put my guitar somewhere where Get the, get the butterfly stand out, pop it in, good to go. All right, so now let's talk about how to use an arpeggio to run into the higher upper structure of these chords, right? My favorite arpeggio is this one right here. 
major arpeggio, super easy. Arpeggio just playing a chord one note at a time. I'm grabbing the root note here, third fret on the low E string, three, five, seven, which we already know is in this key, because remember, we did these up here. So just thinking about it as three shapes, and then the low E string kind of doubled as the top, you're already four out of six, you know what I mean? You're already way ahead of the game. So uh, going three, five, seven, I like doing a little hammer on a slide because that'll line my pointer finger up with five on the A string and then five on the D string. So G, A, B, D, G. Now once I'm here, then I've already connected to that higher structure two and three and four chord. Right, so that's a really cool way to kind of marry two ideas together. All right, and then we're gonna bring it all the way down here, which this is gonna be the relative minor. So many terms we're using today. If any of this confuses you, check out my Patreon because I go through a sequential order of all these different things. So relative minor is where the Mac Daddy minor pentatonic scale is, which is why you always learn E minor pentatonic first, so 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 15. We can really run that down one arpeggio. And then we're here. So really that, what a what an incredible way to start with one idea, get into these other upper structure things, end it here, but then Go backwards through that. And then if you're really fancy, end on a major seven chord because that's what I know you wanna, you wanna get anyways. So that's it, that's the last, the final piece of this is now adding an extended chord to really get all your, all your music ducks in order, all your music Mr. Potato Heads in order. That, that suit is ridiculous. Talk about the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life it was that stupid Mr. Potato Head suit. Thank you, Spirit Halloween. So why not, let's go crazy. Bonus, G major seven. Root note on the E string, four and four on the D and G strings. Now we're grabbing that F sharp, which we haven't talked that much about in this lesson so far. And then your middle finger on the D on the B string, third fret. So three, skip the A string, four, four, three. There you go, you can use it on the one chord, or the four chord. Classy way to end anything. Arpeggio. Doing that in a row is like such a great just warm up exercise. It's a good mental exercise because you're thinking of different concepts and putting them into one thing. And you just, you simply can't do it without Sweetwater and X5. So thank you again to uh, sponsoring the video. Like I said, really, really helps me out. Anytime, anything you get from Sweetwater using my affiliate link because uh, they see all that stuff and they just know that they know that these videos are resonating on such a fundamental level. Let me know what you want to see more of, what kind of lessons you'd like to see, and uh, I'm happy to knock them out. So yeah, please uh, comment, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.